Well, hello there, Dookly here, and today I'm playing RimWorld. Um, <clears throat> before I start, I just want to say that I'm using um, Open Broadcast Broadcaster Software, or OBS, uh, to record this, since it does not work with Fraps. Um, so, I'm liking it so far. I've used OBS in the past for live streaming, but I've never done any local recordings with it. I did some tests, and I liked what I saw, but if there's anything weird with the video, like sound volume being off, although I think this program is a really good way of recording sound, um, so I can, like, see right now that I'm louder than the game, which is good. Anyway, technical shiz was, if there's any problems in the video somewhere, I would apologize. That's just what happens when I'm doing something new, so this is very much a, um, a test recording, but at the same time, I'm, I really want to play this game and show it to you guys, because it's a really cool game. Um, there's been some big updates for it recently, so um, we'll go ahead and give it a try. I haven't played this in a couple months, so I'll probably be kind of shit at it. But um, anyway, I'll go ahead and create a world here just to show you how that works. Um, so we'll go ahead and just randomly... Oh, this is called RimWorld. <laughs> Jesus. Um, and it's a base building simulation colony building game. And it's pretty awesome. Um, it's still in early access alpha. It'll eventually be on Steam. You can find it by just Googling RimWorld. Um, so anyway, uh, you just click the button and it's created this world for us, which is Tor... Torcolaris World. Torcolaris World. Lovely world. Um, and if you go ahead and type in boop, you can get the same exact seed as I did, and... If you're paying close enough attention, you can probably find the exact spot that I'm gonna build my colony in. Um, so anyway, we'll save and finish and we'll get to that in a second. Um, so you get three AI storytellers to choose from. Randy... Randy Random is probably the most difficult. Phoebe Chillax, who's fairly easy, and C Cassandra Classics, who's probably medium. So we'll play with Phoebe Chillax. And um, you've got five difficulty levels. We're going to do Base Builder. I recommend starting on Base Builder. Okay, so we'll select our world here, which is Torcolaris World. We'll select that. Now, we pick a landing site. Um, you want one that has a growing period that's year-round. And I tend to go for mountainous. That tends to be best. You don't want desert because you want to have a lot of wood. Um, rainforest, it rains a shitload and it's usually hot. So I don't suggest going for rainforest. Temperate forest, mountainous, year round. This is perfect. We're going to select that site. Okay, so now you get to choose three characters here. Try to go for people who are young because they can die of old age and generally if they're older there's a lot of things wrong with them health-wise. Uh, so first off we're going to look for somebody who's a good shooter. So we're going to just kind of randomize here. That's a 7. We can do better than that. Wow, this guy's mining and construction is fantastic. Although he's 60 years old, that's a bit old. For me, um, we're just going to keep randomizing. So his shooting is a 7, melee is 9. Very neurotic, and doesn't like having his body parts replaced. That's not real great. Oh, a nine. Female colonist, Amelia Engie. She's an engineer, but she's very good at shooting. She is... she can get slightly addicted to drugs. That's okay. 59 years old. I think we'll make an exception to take her. Um, Engie. Engie? Engie. She, so in this first number here is her... Uh, biological age, and the second number there is a chronological age, meaning she was frozen for 30 years or whatever. Uh, 50, 60, 70, 80? Yeah, almost. God, my math is so shit. Okay, mining, construction. This guy's a psychopath. We don't really want that. Jesus, this guy's fantastic. Um, wow, this is gonna be our shooter instead of her, actually. Um, so she'll be our construction worker, engineer, like it says. This will be our shooter. 26 years old. Careful shoot teacher. That's fine. Good good stuff there. Um, now we need uh, somebody who's good at research. Um, preferably really, really good at research and possibly medicine as well. Um, those are very important. Medicine and research are very important. Um, because you might need to give somebody a transplant or remove their organs for selling on the black market. So that's a 13. Do we have any... Eh, well, he's got a 6 for medicine. I think we'll be alright with that. And we've got good ages 35 and 26. I'm liking that. That's good. So, um... Right. 
we will start. That's a female, a male, and a female. All right. Okay, we'll start here. Hopefully this doesn't crash or anything. It shouldn't. Generating map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> there we go. No problems at all. Um, so yeah, the three of you wake in your cryo sleep sarcophagi, crito sleep sarcophagi, to the sound of sirens ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on an unknown rim world. Pieces of the shredded sh starship fall around you. You start making plans to survive. Meow. That music is a touch loud. I'm just gonna. Okay, and we're going to... So these pods are where we are. I'll just turn it on really quick there so you can see. Um, I'm quickly just allowing them to gather up all these things. Um, we're going to pause really quick and have a look around at our surroundings. We want to try to find a good area that we can fortify and build into the mountain, because I like building dwarf style, just right into the mountain. So this is a really good spot here, because look at this, this tiny chokehold here. And we can easily use this open area. Actually, I think we'll go down here, because this will give us a lot of space. We'll close off this section here. We can use this little building um, right away, and we'll dig into the mountain really quickly. Excuse me. Just hiccuping rudely. So first off, we're going to make a stockpile zone. Just make a nice big area like this. I'll let them pick up that stuff, so they can dump crap off there. Now we're going to make a dumping zone. We'll put the dumping zone just over here. This doesn't need to be real big. We'll allow them to pick up all this stuff. Oh, yeah, I'll turn this on. So we've got a little doggy with us named Ludwig, a Yorkshire Terrier. Yorkshire Terrier. You have no clothes on? Oh, she's got pants on. Okay, so NG is completely topless. Um, She's got pants and a jacket, that's good. Who's our shooter? O'Neill's our shooter, so he's going to take the rifle. She's a 5 and she's a 9, so we'll give her the pistol. And you will take the knife. Like that. Um, and the first thing we're going to do after those zones and equipping our dudes, we're going to claim this ruined building for ourselves. Um, we're also going to order wood to be chopped just in this area here. Like so. And next we will... What will we do? I'll unpause. They'll start getting to work here. Um, we're going to mine into the wall and we'll start building our buildings inside. And we will, in the meantime, get our power production up and running. We're going to go ahead and do solar panels. That's usually the easiest. I find an array of four to be quite good at the start. Like that. You want to put your batteries inside or there will be a fire. And then we'll just connect them like so. And we'll get a door, a wooden one. Plonk that down, and we'll get some wood to patch up these walls. Like a that. Um, we'll also go under misc and get, or uh, no, I'm sorry, furniture, and go to sleeping spots. We're going to put those down. We'll put one down for the dog as well, so they'll be sleeping inside a shelter. Um, otherwise, they get a lot of debuffs for sleeping outside, as you can imagine. And they will start moving stuff like like this shit, they'll start moving it over here, hopefully. Got some medicine and other things. We can see who's assigned to do what here. Um, we're just going to make sure everybody who's available to construct and mine is going to be doing so. Um, we've got some compacted steel here, which is great. It's a good good resource to have nearby. More steel. If we can find plastic steel or whatever it's called, that'd be really good. Silver is the currency you use to trade. So finding silver would be fantastic as well. We're just kind of look around, <clears throat> see what we can find here. Sorry, let me get closer to the mic. Um, since I'm, I feel like I'm whispering or something. A bit tired today. Um, there's some marble. That's good. That makes good building stuff. Got some buildings out here that are abandoned. You can take these apart and we'll reuse the bricks. Uh, and then we won't have to make the bricks since we have to research the ability to make bricks. Um, this is all marble, eh? That's nice. Um, right. We've got 
abundant life, squirrels and turtles and things. We can hunt and eat all these things. You can be cannibals and shoot people and eat them. Um, but I think that's kind of weird, so I don't really do it. But if you're in a really tight spot and you want to do the fucking rugby team thing. Was it a soccer team or a rugby team in the Andy Mountains there where they ate people? I don't know. I know that's controversial, but you gotta do what you gotta do to survive, in my in my opinion. So, um, yeah. Now this area here, it's all walled off. There's been something. This is most likely an ancient burial zone that might have ancient robots in them, which are absolutely terrifying. Um, but it's probably filled with treasure and possibly other colonists or people who have been frozen in sarcophaguses inside here that we could take out and save. Um, but, again, it's very early for that. Um, but by the time we get around to it, they might all be dead anyway. So, there you go. We're going to speed it up a bit here. There's no point in starting hunting yet because we don't have a freezer built. Um, once they get all these things built and once they start digging into here, we will get those things underway. Um, I think... For the mining, we're going to go this way with it, right off the start, and then this is going to be our freezer area here. That seems like a good size freezer. And then, um, I'm going to not have this. We're going to put our kitchen here. Kitchens don't need to be that big. You want to make rooms kind of big because otherwise they get debuffs for rooms being, like, too small. And you want to close off all the rooms so that each room is its like own area. Um, with doors. And then we'll have a kind of like a through passageway there to the freezer for the cook um, to get through. And then... We will start putting our... Okay, so everyone's gone to sleep now. I'm planning ahead. You really need to plan ahead and quickly in this game. Or you will be overwhelmed. Just going to make sure any berries that are out there are being picked. There's plenty of food. We've got all these packaged survival meals around. So we're good on that for the moment. None of the solar panels have been built yet. Um, we're also going to need to start digging out our tombs quickly. You can dig, you can bury people in just generic graves, like this. Um, but you can also dig like Egyptian-style tombs and like bury them in that, which I think is pretty cool. And that's usually what I do. And we'll make sure that that steel is being dug out. There we go. We've fortified the building up, so that's nice. We're gonna put a light in there too, so it's not super dark all the time. And once we've gathered enough wood, which nobody seems to have done yet. Let's see, who's on cutting plants? Make sure everyone's available to cut plants. Grow things, repair things, cooking things, everyone should be able to do that. Okay. Um, I'll also start a growing zone while I'm remembering. We'll put it just there. And that will be growing potatoes. Oh man, she's fast. I like her she's zippy. So Ludwig is here. He's our little doggy. We can train him. We'll train him up to do all these different things. Oh. This hand looking at... Oh, Ludwig was too small to train this. So, before when I played, I had a husky. And the husky could haul and rescue people. So he could work like one of these people carrying things around. Um, and also, if somebody was shot out there, he could go and save them. And bring them back, which was kind of cool. So, see, this is all these silver coins here. This is good currency we're leaving outside. We need to pick up. Um, another thing we need to get up and running really quick is our stove and everything, but again, we need all these solar panels and things to be done. Nobody's bothered to put those power conduits together yet. I need to take out some of these trees and things first. I think people are working to move things now and just get it squared away. One colonist is idle. Who's idle? O'Neill, what are you doing? O'Neill. Well then, sir, you're going to be set to do a bunch of extra things now, so good luck with that. We'll put him on... He'll take care of the dog, so that'll keep him busy. Now, I did take O'Neill as a noble, which means he won't do any manual labor. Which is a real disadvantage, 
but he was very good at shooting and a couple of those other things, and that's the trade-off you take. Because he's young, he actually is good at some things. There's some things he can't do at all. 